Hey and welcome to our tutorial. Today I will show you how to create this WhatsApp logo inside Microsoft Word using Visual Basic for applications that is using macros. So before we start, let's do a quick quiz. So which one is the right logo? The answer is the one in the middle. That's the image downloaded from the internet. Then the one on the right and one on the left are created inside Microsoft Word. The difference is that the one on the right uses a symbol from WebDings. If I select insert symbols, more symbol, it should be highlighted. It's this one. The left one uses a symbol from font CUI UI symbols. Again, if I select insert symbols, more symbols, it should be highlighted. It's this one. Okay, so let's start. We will not start with blank document, but instead we will start with my previous tutorial, which draws these blobs and badges inside Microsoft Word. And before, before we actually do any change to the code, let's quickly talk about coordinates, about Cartesian and polar coordinates. So usually when we think about drawing something in Microsoft Word in or in any other application, we think about what's called the Cartesian coordinate system. When there is this zero zero point in top left corner in Microsoft Word and we have the X, this is X and Y axis. And when we draw, want to draw something, we simply say that some point has a certain X position and certain Y position. The other way how to think about drawing something is what's called a polar coordinate system. So again, we have a some zero point, that's the origin point, zero and zero degrees. And for any point, we can say that there is a certain distance from the origin, which is R as a radius, and there is a certain angle, which is often called theta. But we cannot just tell Word to draw a point on position R and theta. We first have to convert it from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates, that is to x and y. And we do it by saying that x equals r, the radius, times cosine, the angle theta, and y equals r times sine, the angle theta. And what this does is that for, the, for this uh, drawing, zero degrees will be here. And if we just keep the r the same and just increase the angle, we will go around a full circle and draw a circle at a certain radi radius. So this is the radius. What we can do is we can, instead of using cosine and sine, we can switch those two functions and we can say the e x equals r times sine, the angle theta, and y equals r times minus cosine, the angle theta. We will still get the circle, but this time the angle zero will be in the top middle, so this will be angle zero, which is, and it will go clockwise like this, which is usually the way how we want to draw shapes inside Microsoft Word. So let's jump back to our previous document for drawing blobs and badges, this one, and let's take a quick look at the code. So if I open macros and the code for drawing those uh, polygons, you can see it's fairly simple. It fits on one page. We have the constant of segments, which sets how many segments do we want for the shape. And we use this as a size for the array which holds all the points. We have the radius and angle which we have just talked about. We have the x and y origin. Then we set the x and y origin to some different values so just so we are not drawing the shape around the top left corner. And for each segment we calculate the angle. We convert the angle from degrees to radians just so we can use it for sine and cosine angles uh, functions. Sorry. We set the radius to some wavy looking shape and when we convert it from the polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates, then we simply draw the shape. So I will probably delete everything and start with updating our code. So what I will do is I will make the fill invisible. So fill dot visible will be zero and I will instead make the line visible. So line is visible and I will set the line weight to maybe three points. So it's very obvious how the shape looks like. If I run this again, I'm getting some blobby shape. What I will most likely do is I will change the radius to some, some static value like 100. And if I run this, I'm getting a nice looking circle. Okay, so what we want to do, what we want to have, it's not a circle. We want to have a shape like this. Let's change a different, let's do it in a different color. So we want to shape which look, looks like this. There is an arrow and there is the part of a circle. So instead of drawing full circle, we only want to draw a part of the circle going from certain angle to a different angle. So let's say that I'll make some more space in here. 
and I will draw this shape one more time but in much bigger size so this is the shape which we are looking for and I will change the color back to red so this is the this is the origin and we want to specify some angle the angle will be arrow angle this angle is arrow angle so this is arrow angle and there is this angle which will be the arrow span so this is arrow span so I will add two more variables that will be arrow angle and arrow span so inside here I will add two more variables arrow angle as double and arrow span as double as well so what we want to do is we want to draw the circle not going around 360 degrees but we want to do it for 360 degrees minus the minus the arrow span because that will be used for the space will be used for the arrow so what i will do is i will define those two variables i will say that arrow angle is for example 225 or maybe 90 for now and arrow span would be for example i don't know 30 degrees so what I want to do is I don't want to go around full circle 360 but instead I want to do it 360 minus the arrow span so if I run this I should get a shape which has the hole and the size of this hole of, of this part should be the size of this part should be 30 degrees Of course I don't want this to be you know going from 0 to 360 minus 30 because if I want to draw a shape like this I want to start from this part I'll probably jump to my previous document it's more obvious in here so instead of starting from angle 0 which is here this is angle 0 I want to start from this position which is the position of the arrow angle which is this this angle plus the half of the arrow span so I will start from arrow angle plus the arrow span and go around the 360 minus the arrow span so let's quickly update the code so I will start with I will add plus the arrow angle arrow angle which is 90 plus the half of the arrow span divided by 2 okay I will mix add some brackets in here I will delete everything and if I run this code again it should be located around 90 degrees so the gap is around 90 degrees and the span is 30 degrees so that's perfectly fine we just need to add two more points one point would be the point actually used for the arrow which is farther away from the center this radius is a little bit bigger and the one more point would be the same as the first point so this is the first point but we only need, also need to add one more point which is the last point just so that the word closes this shape and we get this nice arrow so what we will do is we will not go for from counter zero to segments but instead we'll go to segments minus one and we will make sure that the last point is the same as the first point so the poly points segments so this is the last point is same as the poly points 0 1 that's for x and I will copy copy and paste it one more time that's for y so right now the first and last points are the same I also have to update the code to not be divided by segments but segments minus 1 like this okay so I will delete everything and if I run this macro again the first and last points are now being connected the only missing part is I need one more point for the arrow so I'll open the code I will make this a little bit different I will probably make the setting of the radius in here and make some space between setting the angle and converting the angle from real degrees to radians and I will say if the counter equals segments minus one so if the, if the counter is the last point in our loop it's not the last point in the array but last point in our loop then I want to draw the I want to draw the arrow I will say and if 
And how, I, how do I draw the arrow? I draw the arrow by setting the radius to a different number. So radius should be bigger, for example, 120. And the angle should be actually, we already have this angle. The angle is arrow angle value. So angle is arrow angle. If I delete everything and run this again, I should get a nice looking arrow in the 90 degrees and the span is 30 degrees. And the difference between the radius is the radius is 100 and the radius for arrow is 120. So really all that's missing to go from this shape to the WhatsApp logo shape is to plug in some different values and that's a trial and error thing. So I already know some values. So the arrow angle should be 225 and the angle span is around 28. The normal radius, like the normal radius is 68 for this case and the bigger radius for arrow is 95. And I will also set the line width to be 12 points. So if I run this, I should get a shape similar to the WhatsApp logo. I will just change the outline. I will do this manually in the former ribbon to be white. And I will also change the page background color to be green. I already have this color predefined. It's the RGB values 37, 211 and 102. Then I will insert a new text box like this. Make sure that the shape fill is set to no fill and outline to no outline. Then I will select insert symbol, more symbol, and I will probably use this symbol from font web things. So I will insert this font symbol, make it white as well. And of course, make it much bigger, probably even bigger. Then I will rotate it a little bit, I believe like this. And I'm getting a nice looking WhatsApp logo in Microsoft Word. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching.